Hi, my name is Eric Jamois. Thank you for joining me in this first AdMet Predictor interactive tutorial dedicated to working with files. So the topics we are going to cover today include opening and saving files, importing fields from an external file, exporting work to Excel. We will also see how to use .xtk files, uh, which are session files in Admit Predictor to save the status of your work. And finally, we will take a quick look at how you can access the Admit Predictor manual. So without further ado, I would like to show you quickly how you open a file in Admit Predictor. The most common type of files containing compound structures are SDF files. And in most cases, these contain only structures. Sometimes they contain structures and properties. So here we have uh, a file of uh, 500 compounds of peridooxazepinones. And you can very easily open this file by just going to File Open and selecting this SDF file as the file to work with. Now you have the option to provide the name of the field to be used as the identifier for these compounds. And so here the identifiers are you are uh, the identifier is encoded in the EDX field. So you can specify that uh, as part of the uh, reading process. Okay, so this is again a very very simple case where we have uh, structures in an SDF file. The other uh, possible situation is that you may have uh, structures and properties in that file. So briefly taking a look at this file, opening it with Notepad here, uh, if we go to the bottom of each record within that file, we see that there's other information that is associated to these structures. So for example, in this case, we have a field containing canonical smiles, another field containing molecular weights, which have been pre-calculated, another field containing the ECCS class for each compound, and another field containing, it seems, synthetic difficulty information for each of these compounds. So this is maybe something that was assessed by a chemist. It could be something that was calculated in an external program or even within our software. In any case, these are uh, pieces of information that you may want to bring along uh, with a compound. So that's very easy to do as well. Uh, through the same open process, you can load the structures and the properties that are associated with each record. So here you see that alongside the compound we've imported the canonical smiles, the molecular weight, the ECCS class, and the synthetic difficulty information. So again that is something that automatically happens as, as part of the loading process when that information is provided uh, as part of the file. So another type of file that you can provide is um, is also um, another type of file you can work with is uh, files containing smile strings. So over here, we're going to open this file also with Notepad, and you will see that uh, we have a tab delimited file in this case containing the name of the compounds, that's the identifier, and then we have the canonical smiles that define the structure of each one of these compounds. And so it's very easy in Admit Predictor likewise to load these compounds, simply use the same open command, uh, pull down, and just select this file. So the program recognizes that there is a smiles field 
and also that there's an identifier column that is going to provide the name for each one of these compounds. So just click OK, and then the compounds are going to load in a similar way that we've loaded compounds before. Now, we can have a situation where we have the structures on one side, and then we have a bunch of properties in an external file. So for example here, let's bring back our previous uh, set of structures, these peridooxazepinones that I mentioned previously, where we have, um, again, uh, these 500 structures. But we also have information about these compounds that we'd like to import separately. So in this case, they're contained in an Excel file that may have been exported from a database or a similar sort of scenario. And that what we see here, I'm just gonna wait a couple seconds that this opens from Excel, but we have this file, which contains the canonical smiles, the identifier, the molecular weight, some information about the possible Herg liability, solubility, and um, synthetic difficulty. So what we wish to do is bring in this information alongside these compounds. And what you see here is that the it, they are not in the same order because the first compound in the table here, uh, we have an identity an identifier that ends in 709 and here it ends in 123. So obviously, if we were just to sort of cut and paste, that wouldn't work because we need an index field to bring in the properties, uh, again, in an indexed way with the, with the compounds. So we need, we need a field uh, to base this on and in this case, it's gonna be the identifier. And in order to do that, we actually need the identifier to be the first field in our table. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut this column and we're going to insert it here so that it becomes the first column. Okay, that's very important. And we're going to save this as a tab delimited tab delimited text file. Okay, so we're going to save this as a tab delimited file. So this is done now. And what we can do at this stage is bring in these properties again in a way that is it is indexed on the identifier. So the way to do this on the file, there's an option which is import compound attributes. And here we're going to browse, select the file that we exported from Excel, which contains the properties and the identifier to do the matchmaking. Okay. Our first line in the file contains the column labels, so the identifier, canonical smiles, etc. So we have to click this so the program understands that the first uh, line is not to be taken. And then we have the list of fields that are available to us for import. So by default, they're all turned on. So if we proceed, we're going to import everything, which may not be what we want to do. You can actually selectively import. So if you have, you know, 30 or 20 or 30 fields that come along, uh, from that Excel file, you may not want to bring in that many fields. So one of the things you can do is if you click, say, two of these fields and say discard selected, it doesn't actually delete them, it just marks them out as fields not to be part of the import process. Okay, so they're, they're, they're discarded from the import process, but obviously not from the file. Uh, but if you're happy to bring them in, then you say import selected. And then in this case, they will all be brought alongside. Okay. And if you're happy with your setup, then just click finish. And it will very happily uh, bring that in. 
Now, how would we know that uh, this is actually correct? So I have two molecular weight columns actually here, and you can see that they match. And if you want to plot them, that's just very easy to do. You take one and then uh, the other and you will see that they are on a straight line. So uh, for sure, we've done the right thing and it's worked correctly. It's just a very, very easy check to do. So at this point, I would like to introduce you to this ability to save your work as an XTK file. And these are session files. It's a proprietary format to admit predictor, but it's very useful as far as, again, setting up certain checkpoints uh, in your work. So for example here, we can do save this, and we're going to save this as an XTK file. So we can call it maybe session one, okay, dot XTK. All right, so it's going to save everything that we've done so far. So if we exit the program, so notice it didn't ask me anything because we've already saved the work. Now, if we restart the program, we can very easily get back to where we left off. So now instead of reading the structure file, we will be reading or opening the session file, the XTK file that we just saved and notice that it is bringing in the data in the exact same way that where we left off with actually even the graphs and everything uh, pops into place. Okay, so it's a very easy and convenient thing to do. Now say we want to calculate certain properties. So in order to do this, we go to data and calculate admit properties and say we want to calculate only tox properties as part of this exercise. We're just gonna go ahead and say calculate. Okay, so the program is very fast, actually multi-threaded, so it's very quick in calculating properties. And say that we want to make a histogram of, say, admit risk over here. So we're going to make a histogram of admit risk for these compounds. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you how you can very easily save this work both to Excel and another session file, for example. So let's export this to Excel. There's a very nice and convenient way to export what you have done to an Excel workbook. So, so this is our first session that we're exporting. Just select export, save. And then at this point, you can decide which one of the properties you want to export. If you want to export everything, you can leave it as is. If you want to remove some of these properties from the list, then you just select that property and hit remove and it will remove it. Okay. And if you're ready to proceed, then just click OK. And uh, so this will actually export everything. It will export all the values that are in the table, of course. It will also create depictions for the molecules and also for the star plots that you see here. It is actually the star plots that take a little bit longer to process in terms of generating the images that are being put in the uh, Excel export. So you want to make sure you don't have enormous files when you when you do this. I have 500 compounds here. It's working fine. But I just want to alert you to the fact that it may take a little bit longer if you have uh, larger numbers of structures. And now if we go over here and select the, the file that we just exported to, our session one file, we open Excel and it will actually show us the exported data.
So we can go full screen here. And so as you will see, you have all the structures, the 500 structures. You even have the tool tips and the stop plots, which were generated. So again, it's a very convenient way to uh, export your data for you know, sharing with colleagues, for example. So the other thing we can do here is save a second session. So for example, we may want to save this as session two. That's our second checkpoint in us performing this work. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Again, at this point, if we exit the software completely and then restart, we're going to be open. We're going to be able to get back on our feet right away and restart where we left off. So this is our session two file. We'll just go ahead and reopen it. And our data comes back, including our admit risk plot that we had generated as part of this effort. Okay, so we've, uh, we've actually gone pretty, uh, moved along pretty well here. Uh, the last thing I'd like to do with you is show you quickly how you can find more information. Um, so if you're looking for more details in the manual, uh, there are a couple there are a couple formats under which you can access this information. There's a, an online help. So for instance, if you were going for import, uh, you would be able to search on this topic and it would show you how you can import attributes, which is what we just did a few minutes ago. The other way to access the information is through either PDF or HTML versions of the manual. So if you go again under help, admit predictor PDF manual, this will bring up the PDF manual for the software. Likewise, it is searchable. So if you want to search for uh, import, you can very easily uh, do that as well. So just type import and it will guide you to the section of the manual that um, deals with what we just did earlier. So that pretty much concludes our uh, session today on uh, reading uh, and uh, saving files. And again, um, whatever you need, we're always happy to uh, help you out with the software. We hope that was useful. Have a great rest of the day. All right, bye-bye now.